this. Probably not. Let's scoot my camera over. Let's see. Huh. Pretty good. <clears throat> Let's close this door. Miss Popper. Bobby, are you coming? Are you? Oops. Oops. What's this thing? I can't see. It's upside down. on cool okay it is almost 8 30 i am going to start anyway welcome to another tuesday night live with brutus monroe and tonight i am going to be using um the inspiration box from the month before it had a bunch of like strawberries and stuff like of um, fruits or whatever. And this is one of the stencils that came in a set. And this is called the Strawberry Seeds. It's a six by six stencil. Really nice stencil. It, um, it has it where you can make like little seeds. And I saw this card that one of the other design team members made, Jessica Vasher, which I really like how she did that. So I'm sort of gonna be mimicking what she did. I'm not using, these are, um, just because I have these out on my table. They're the hot foil like cards. All you gotta do is <clears throat> add your different color hot foil papers onto this, run it through your, um, what do you call, heat machine, and you'll have a nice, pretty, cool background with the, these different designs that uh, they have. And Brutus Moreau sells these in little packs. And there's different designs in the, the the different packs just depending on which one you get i forget what pack that one is but i bought one i haven't tried it yet as my foiling skills is not the greatest so now i'm gonna go ahead and get started and ha ah, since um i am doing a little giveaway to whoever survives through this painful process with me and whoever it is i'm going to be sending these stamps to so Let's begin. So what I did was I pre-cut the paper that I'm going to be using, and I'm going to be using picked raspberry and peacock feathers to make the distressed background with. I'm going to be using, I don't know what happened to it, seems to have disappeared already. I'm going to be using watercolor paper to blend the background and I'm just going to be using there's different types of blending brushes this blending brush it's like a sponge I can't decide which one I actually like better I don't know if I like the sponge or this is like a bristly one I think they both kind of have benefits I'm not the greatest blender so sometimes I feel like this works a little better for me but I think this over time it starts to kind of peel off or whatever so but i like that it seemed to blend a little smoother so i'm going to try both and show you how both work <clears throat> wherever my paper has been uh, okay where did this paper go i had everything here Paper that I had 
So now I'm going to start with the peacock feathers. And I'm just going to start by blending some of this on. Because what I'm basically trying to make, it's going to end up sort of looking like a, like a watermelon. You know, I'm going to do part teal here and then the part pink there. And then I'm going to be adding the little, like, seeds. And hopefully it looks nice. And I'm just going to start by... Blending, like I said, I am not the greatest blender, and that's why I love for me using the distress oxides. I don't know what the real difference is between the oxides and the distress ink is. I think um, I know this is more chalky. The the oxides is more chalky, but I seem to be able to blend this so much better than I can blend the distress inks. But I really love how you can create some really gorgeous backgrounds with your distress inks. And I just really love the different colors that they have. I'm just going to blend this off. So I'm going to sort of do half teal. Well, this is not teal. Half peacock feathers. And then half picked raspberry. And you can make a really nice, pretty card by simply creating your own background. Like I said, I, one of the other design team members uh, made a similar card like this, and I just absolutely loved it. It was so pretty. So I'm scrap lifting from the amazing Jessica Vasher. She's also on the design team. Okay. So, we got that all hooked up. Now, I'm going to just wipe this up. I actually made my own um, wipes by buying some, just a little towelettes that you can buy, like from Amazon. And then I just dropped, I bought some, actually, it's actually sanitizer. And my daughter does makeup she does a lot of weddings and stuff like that she's really good at it she actually um has people who fly her to their to her to their weddings and stuff to do their makeup and so she's always looking for ways to clean her makeup brushes because that's like a really big issue you can see how well the sanitizer cleans and she tried it out on a brush she had that she couldn't get the like makeup up off of because a lot of their believe it or not they sh there are a lot of the like eyeshadows are, is like pigment and stuff so a lot similar to like some of the inks that you may use in scrapbooking and it cleaned it up extremely extremely well and ended up buying this stuff because when I was working for Morton Salt and uh and yes it's the the umbrella girl, the salt that you have on your table. I actually worked for the, they have a plant here in Cape Canaveral, Florida. And when they had, what happened? Oh, it was COVID, that's right. So when COVID came out, you know, we were of course buying a bunch of sanitizer and stuff for our employees. And we get a lot of stuff from vendors and everything. And a vendor, it's actually, they're actually a, um, what do you call? In alcohol, they make alcohol actually, but they made sanitizer, and this sanitize hand sanitizer was absolutely amazing to clean. Uh, like I said, I saw her clean her brush when I started using it on my stamps and stuff. Oh, it cleaned up ink off of my stamps that I couldn't hardly even get off that had been there that I had left it on, you know, too long or something like that. But then I used it. And that stuff was absolutely amazing. It used to be cheap, but I think a lot of people have started buying it now. So, of course, what happens with everything, as it seems like everything nowadays has went up in price. So, of course, it's sort of pricey. But it works so, so, so well. I, I love it. And it's called Faber something i have the bottle out to show it a little later but it works on cleaning up your brushes and everything 
You'd be surprised. It cleans up ink, pen ink. I mean, just, but you gotta be careful because it's so strong that it can, you know, lift paint. But I absolutely love using it. Okay, so got this. I'm kind of blend this, try to blend this all together so you don't see a big, like, divide here. There you go. Now, close that up. I'm going to add a little bit more of the peacock feathers. But I'm going to wipe that up so I don't get this stuff everywhere. And you can see how dirty my table is. Uh, and it's not peeling off, or not peeling off, um, like stripping the actual design in the mat. But you can see just how much dirt this stuff is picking up. And I usually wipe, I'm bad about wiping my fingers, so sometimes I have to redo a card or find a way to fix the card because I got some bunch marks everywhere. Let's let this dry a little bit, my table. I thought I had some paper towels here, but I don't because a lot of my paper towels are on my porch at the moment because my daughter decided to come home with chickens. Yes, yeah, she came home with four baby chickens. I guess with these millennials, you're just not normal if you don't own chickens. So I was like so upset when she came home. I'm like, you know, what are we going to do with chickens? We have a big 85-pound dog and another dog, which... Surprisingly, <laughs> I thought for sure because my one bigger dog loves to chase things because he's like part pit and part hound dog. But he actually, I guess he can tell that I love them, so he loves them, so they must be normal. So he goes around them and stuff and doesn't bother them. But we have four baby chickens who are actually a decent size now. We're going to build a chicken coop and everything because I guess... In this day and time, having chickens is the thing to do. Okay, so now that I'm done with that, and I've got this all blended out, and now I'm going to take my stencil and add some. I'm going to be using the Brutus Monroe Detail Ink, Black Ink, and this is waterproof, and it's called Raven Black. And it works really, really, really well. And this is not shelter. It's not going to be pain. I'm trying to think. Seeds go up this way. Yeah, it's not that way. That's like raindrops. No, this way. So now I'm going to just ink on some of these dots here. I don't think I'm going to put it like uniformly everywhere. Maybe sort of sparingly if that makes sense uh, it's hard for me to get around because my dogs are in here laying on the floor so now I'm gonna take this little blender brush gonna dab on a little bit of this and we're going to add our seeds and it ends up looking like a like a watermelon <laughs> and I just loved the way she did that it just looked so cool because I didn't think to do that and I just thought that was just the coolest idea. So I am going to add some of these seeds, different spots on the background here. That's one thing with stencils, you know, you can create so many different types of looks. You can enhance paper like I never thought I saw. One of the ladies on the team, she she made the card with background, actual printed background paper, but she also took the stencil over the top of the paper, which looked really cool. And I would have never thought to do that. That's what's so nice about seeing other things that other people create, because it you know, just gives you really good ideas on what you can do. So... It's always a way to learn new things. See? And it just kind of gives you a nice little, neat little background. And I loved 
the way that looked. So I'm gonna add a few dots, well, not dots, seeds here. It'd be really nice if you used um, like glaze because Brutus Moreau makes a lot of different like, like this is a chroma glaze. It looks like this. And when you put it on, it's like super shiny and it's not, you know, like the glitter look like a stickle. It's a, it's kind of hard to explain, but it doesn't has ha it doesn't have that glitter or something like a stickle would look like this, but it has a really nice shine to it when you're done, and it comes in like different colors and everything. And so many of his um, like glitter glazes that he makes, they smell so good. I swear, they smell like roses or like perfume. It smells so good. I love smelling his um, <laughs> what do you call um glazes that he makes and he makes a lot of different really cool things Let's see this is almost dry but you can see how really well and what I did with my mat here is I actually glued this to my table so it doesn't move okay so now that we got this done here I am going to mat this against a and I actually have this pre-cut out because I try not to have the videos be so long but i'm thinking if i would have did it against white and then i think i'm gonna do it a different way i think i'm gonna actually mat this against a piece of white paper and then um make the actual card in the till so now i'm gonna add some glue to the back of this it's time for me to buy some more glue so bad about putting the tops back on my glues so they all get clogged up as you can probably see my desk is a mess I feel like I see something in the camera weird Let's see let me get this unclogged so where did my little needle go so clogged I need to get a tape runner actually I think I ordered one I really love um, that they're easy to use, but I love, I don't know, glue. I feel like you can put it, lay it down easier, and especially like in small places and stuff, and it's more detailed, especially the ones with the tips. So I'm going to get this all inked up here. Well, I inked. Did I just say inked? I sure did. Glued. Let me add some glue here. I'm gonna get this laid down and then I'm gonna got this always worried about smearing stuff and I know somebody said I'm just gonna pre-cut this quickly and then actually cut it to the right shape with my cutting board here to the side that way I'm not having to go so far off camera but I know someone said you can spray something onto the paper so that it doesn't smudge I have to look that up because me and smudges seem to be best friends okay I got this cut because yeah. originally I was going to mat this against the till but I forgot that since I'm coloring, or I made the the card front here, um, a color, it sort of blends too much. So to make it stand out, I am going to actually mat it against a piece of white cardstock. That way, it pops a little bit more. And you can see here, it does that. Now, I'm going to put on these. I thought about um, like pre folding a bunch of card stocks and have it. And I know you can buy it that way, which I've actually thought about doing. Maybe it would make my life a little bit easier sometimes. I have um, 
some of the pre-folded and pre-cut cardstock in white. And I know you can actually buy it in colored cardstock. It just makes life convenient. I am all about whatever makes things easier. So I'm going to put this down here. And I'm going to trim it in my trimmer. Step. You see? Just like that. I may have to use my bigger cutter to trim the side. I'm going to trim this. This is a old trimmer that I've had forever. It's old creative memories. I think that's what originally turned me on to scrapbooking years and years ago. I'm so glad I did. That's been about 10 years since I have been crafting, maybe longer. Well, I would actually say longer because ever since I was a kid, I always made some type of memory book where I collected newspaper clippings and just different stuff from school and stuff like that. So I've been crafting. I would say I've been a crafter my since I came out my mother's stomach. <laughs> okay, so here we have the card here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I believe, I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to cut out, um, I'm going to cut some color some of these strawberries here and line it up I think along the bottom of my card but I'm also going to spritz a little bit of water on here and that kind of um I like now it kind of gives it that little like watery look and you can see that it kind of that it kind of gives it a neat little look to the paper uh, I like that, how it gives it that look I'll kind of set that aside maybe I will actually just dry it a little bit with my heat gun There you go, see? And it kinda, you can see the little speckles and things. It's definitely not something, it's not a new idea. It's one that's been around for quite some time. Uh, so, but I don't do that often. So for me, it's still new. I'm just gonna wipe this off. This on the other side, let my things dry. And usually when I use stencils, you know, a lot of people like put it in, like have a, just a little tub of water with a little bit of soap in it. Leave, especially if you're using something like a glaze or something like gl um, uh, glue or anything like that with your stencils. That way it's not sticking. Because if you're like me or you forget to clean your stuff, by the time you get back to it, it's going to be a mess and extremely hard to clean up. So, you can see it cleans this up really well. Just wipe this off. And I like that it pretty much dries really quick. Nice and clean. Okay, so now, let me think. Would have been kind of cool if I did something like that. Make a background. That's odd. Okay, so now I'm going to, I think, color up some of these strawberries. I haven't used this. I've used almost, excuse me, every stamp in this. Almost. I think I used that. I used some of the flowers. Um, oh, I know. Hold on. like a lemonade stamp set and I had it here somewhere and I cannot find it. I thought that would be kind of cool 
but it looks like I'm going to be stuck with the strawberries. I'm not sure where that stamp went through. I thought that would have been kind of cool. So it looks like strawberries and watermelons it is. And thank goodness I had just bought some more um, blending paper. I'm going to stamp. Let's see. Maybe I'll stamp this cake. I haven't used this cake. Well, yeah, I did. I think I did. I usually just stamp a couple different areas and then figure out what or which one I actually want to use once I'm done. I'll stamp a few strawberries on here, too. And we can decide what we'd like to color. Those are really cute stamps that you got a light, nice um, variety of stamps. You can use the flowers, you can, it's got this little vine, you got the little cake, you got the phrases, and that makes it nice. So then you can make a variety of cards. I have a Misty, but I'm not gonna use my Misty because I feel like I always tend to go or stamp off camera. Hopefully I'm not. I'm going to stamp this on here. There we go. Now I'm going to... I wonder if that will look cool. Huh. I think I'll stamp this. Let's see how that may end up looking. And then what I'm going to do is... I believe this does come with a the matching dies. I just don't have the matching dies. That way you can cut it. So I will be fussy cutting the images out. Ooh, ooh, see? Messy, messy. Okay. Now I'm going to stamp this image on there. Ooh, perfect. Cool. Okay. So now I'm thinking, since this is teal and pinkish, I'm not going to make my strawberries totally red. I think I'm going to color it pink. I think I'm going to try Harvey 30, 21, 32. Oh, that's bright. I'm going to try it anyway. Let's see what I come up with. This is RV21. Just gonna get this colored on here. And you know what? I think this is actually the watercolor paper because this paper feels really thick. And that's the one thing you can notice when you're using your Copics and if, if you have a good paper or not, you can feel how much the paper is soaking in the ink. See that? This is RV32. Just gonna add some of this color here. I didn't go red because I figured it's not gonna really match this color in here. Add a little bit of the darker tone here. This is RV34. Now, I'm going to blend it all out here. This way it looks like it's got some shine to it. Oh, thanks. Yes, I saw this background on, like I said, one of the other design team members made it. See, now that's just not gonna work. That paper, I feel like it's making it look a little funky. So, I am going to... Oh, I found it. No, I didn't. I didn't. Ha. Oh, and I found the stamps that I wanted to use. Ha, see? Things happen for a reason. 
Okay, let's try this again. But I may. I'm feeling like with the strawberries, you know, you can have a watermelon drink. So I think. I think I'm gonna use try this um, this lemonade stand. Not lemonade stand. This lemonade stand isn't that cute? You get the little straw, not strawberries. I'm stuck on strawberries. The um, like limes and orange pieces. It's got homemade lemonade. And see, this is to me. Enjoy the summer. Perfect for this. You're thinking watermelon. Enjoy the summer, right? Yes. Even though summer is almost over, but in Florida, we definitely do not have summer. But I am definitely looking forward to all these chickens I have inherited because my daughter decides for some reason that we need chickens. And it's the thing to do. <laughs> they are cute, though. I was going to bring one and show everybody on the camera. <laughs> they're about this big, but now they're about this big. At first, they weren't very friendly. I was getting pecked quite a bit. You go outside, and they love to peck at your feet. And one day, I'm bending down, and I'm trying to feed the things. And next thing I know, they they jump up on my back and on my shoulder. And then there's, like, two sisters. We have two, the black-colored chickens, and then two, like, the, I don't know, gold or yellow chickens. So they're sisters so you got two four of them and the two one of the black ones jumped up on me and then like her sister jumped up on me and they end up falling asleep on my shoulder i thought that was the greatest thing i think that's when i decided that chickens were okay because <laughs> you know they just seem so cute they're actually very they're actually very smart they said and they can see better than a dog. That they they recognize um, faces better than dogs. Which kind of would make sense. Because we've had to maybe for uh, maybe two or, th two or three weeks. And they know me and come running to me before I even come outside. They're just clucking away. And they will follow you literally everywhere. You know, like I'll, I'll be vacuuming because like... At the moment, they're like on our port until we're getting this chicken coop built. And they just follow you around everywhere out there. And they start not afraid of much or plucking at the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, you better be careful of that. So, what do you think? I'm thinking if I were to make it like, I think I'm going to make it like the drink inside is pink. Oh, let's see. I'm gonna try some different colors. What's this? Let's see, how bright is this? That's pretty, oh, that's a light color. I'm gonna use this one. So I am gonna color this in like we have some pink drink inside of here. You can imagine we're having pink watermelon lemonade. Color this here. Hopefully everybody's having a decent night. It's not um it's very quiet here in my house at the moment. I think I'd like to try and do lives at a different time. I feel eight, maybe eight. Well, actually it should have been at eight, but I started late tonight. Technical difficulties. My grandson is sick. He has an inner ear infection. Although I think it's something a little bit more than that. Because he's been making me sick as well. And I've been sick for... like, But I think it's allergies. The weather seems to be really bad. Okay, see. I like that. We're going to do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fussy cut. I'm going to try this RV32 and RV34 with this tall drink here. Let's see how this looks. I'm just going to color this. Okay. 
I think I need to re-ink my, what do we call it though? My Copics, I think that's what a lot has to do with it. I think they're getting dry. Cause this marker definitely feels wetter than the other one. So add some of this color here. And then I'm gonna fussy cut these out and stamp it with Enjoy Your Summer. Even though, like I said, summer is just about over, but in Florida, <laughs> winter doesn't really exist. Not at all. Okay. Now, I'm going to color my bottle a little bit. Well, I think I'll color the... Uh, maybe I'll color this straw. No, I think I'll color my straw. So I'm trying to get it to sort of blend with the background. Hopefully this doesn't look too crazy. I really like the stamp set, super cute stamp set. We can always still add some strawberries to it as well. I like that. And I think, you know what? Just for fun, I'm just gonna color this. Suck that out. You know. And this stamp set here, which is kind of cool, Brutus Monroe came out with a, it's, uh, it's a stencil. And what's cool is that the stencil works to where it looks like, um, I'm trying to think, where it gives you the shading you need to make it look like there's something in the actual bottle. Really cool. I believe Shannon Smith created a video doing this, and a couple of the other girls as well, but that's sort of cool. But I don't have that stencil. But what a cool idea, because I definitely don't know how to make it look like there's a drink inside of your bottle, but that stencil is perfect for doing that. So, shout out for sure to Brutus Moreau for being so creative on that. Because anything to make crafting easier for, for people, to me, is a blessing. It's not everybody sometimes is as crafty as other people, you know, because I definitely can't. I can't draw. I'm not the greatest coloring person. Although my daughter says I'd probably be better if I knew the color wheel, which I don't. But, you know, so I'm not. So for me, I'm not that great. So any extra tools is helpful. And I think it helps people who are not as crafty feel like they can craft more. See? Okay. Not bad. I'm not liking this thing, though. That's looking a little crazy. I wonder if I can fix it with this RV34. I have pink juice. I think it's because the marker is very dry. Kind of looks crazy. And I'm going to blend this out, see what that looks like. Because it just looked really blotchy. That looks a little better. I like that a little better. Uh, maybe I'll color this and see what that looks like. I think that kind of makes it go a little better. Hopefully that's not too crazy looking. Is that crazy looking? Probably is. <laughs> yeah, just not feeling that. But I do like the, that drink so far. So, what I'm going to do is I think... Uh, you know, I'm just going to stamp. The background is perfect for the enjoy your summer. 
and I usually wipe off. It's a, if it's a new stamp, I usually take a um, towel or something and wipe off because I guess there's a layer on there, which I never knew. <laughs> but, of course, I learned that from watching videos, from watching Jennifer McGuire, which I've watched her, and that's what she does. And that has really helped me because sometimes, you know, you'll stamp, and it's like, you know, it comes out blotchy looking and stuff. So, okay, now I'm going to stamp. Where can I put this? I think this will go good there, right there. There. Enjoy summer. And then, let me trim this up a little bit, hopefully. It's not one of my best but I'm trying to do a little better with not having to pre-plan everything, see how I can do it just, you know, on a live and actually <laughs> thinking without thinking too long because sometimes it takes me hours to do something because I redo it so much. And see it, to me, with the background, you don't really need to add a lot of stuff because the card is more about the background that we created. And I think that is enough. And I am going to glue this down to my card. Okay. Now, so, for everybody who is here and still here, if you can leave a comment on this video with your name that I'm going to pick um, one person to win these stamps. And you're going to get the, this is a, dun, 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 what is this? What's the title? See Scene. And then this kind of cute, happy harvest stamp set. Perfect in time for Halloween, which is coming up. Perfect in time for fall. So a great stamp set. So if you can leave a, if you leave a comment on the video, so I have your name and possibly maybe how to contact you. If you're not my friend on Facebook, maybe connect to me. Then I know how to get in touch with the winner. And thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.